Are we good? Mm -mm. All right, Shalom, Master Allah. First and foremost, I'm again, but I'm, a, I'm going to begin Salakia by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachakwadash. I want to give double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do teach and rule well, and peace, love, and blessings to those four elect, man. All right, and once again, I'm out here. I'm the brother you call from Prophets in Babylon, Sarasota, which is a branch of the Prophets in Babylon Tampa Church. Shalom to those brothers. And today I'm out here, man, the elements, all right, coming at you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, once again with the message of repentance, man, and coming back to the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son in these latter days, okay, before Yahweh Bashim al Shai brings great destruction upon the earth, in particular America, man. Shalom to you, brothers and sisters out there. That may be on the comment board, that may be watching, shout out to you and your families. All right, today I'm going to go into what's my spirit to go into today. All right, is, uh, is Ezekiel the 37th chapter, man. Ezekiel the 37th chapter, okay, and, and the rising up of the dry bones, man, which were us. All right, we were those dry bones in the book of Ezekiel, okay, that 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 is the Lord asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? It? All right, and I'm going to go into it, and Abarat's eyes edifying to you brothers out there. And your sisters out there as well. Okay. So right here, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 1. And it reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. All right, and this valley right here is talking about America, man. And what is a valley? It's a low place. Okay, and America is a valley, it's a low place, but not only is it low physically. But also spiritually, man, is low morality. Look at the people in the world. They have low morals for themselves. Look at the women. Look at the men. Okay, so there is no morals here in America. So this is that valley of dry bones where we were set, man. In a dead estate. Okay? A, a dead estate within our minds. Calling ourselves black. Calling ourselves Latinos. Calling ourselves Native Americans. And, and savages. And, and niggas. And spicks. Okay, so we were dead for a period of time. Mentally and spiritually, man. Okay, but now is the time of us coming out of that dead estate within our own minds. Now is the time to come back to Yahweh by Shema Shai and come back to the knowledge of who you truly are. Okay? It goes on to say, And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Okay, so we were in a very uh, 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 a dead estate, man. It said they were very dry. Okay, and when you, and, 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 and when, uh, Flesh, when flesh decays, you get to the bone. And the longer the, the longer the bones, okay, longer that, the longer that, so like, let me, let me slow down. The longer that corpse has been dead, okay, the more dry the bones will be. So it's that the bones were very dry, which is symbolizing how we were in a dead state for a very long time, man. A very long time, okay, because we fell away from who we were. We, yeah, there, there was a great falling away of who we were as a people, all right? It goes on to say, and said unto uh, Ezekiel 37 and 3, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And he said, <laughs> It says, uh, And I answer, O Lord, power thou knowest. Okay, so imagine that, uh, somebody bringing you to a cemetery and asking you, Can these bones live? He, but in, in, your mind, Ezekiel, in his mind, Ezekiel, like, Man, hell no. Nah. But that's the Lord talking to him. So he's like, O Lord, you know, thou knowest. <laughs> okay, thou knowest, Lord. You got to put yourself in these men's shoes. And what he's seen, can these bones live? When you, and when you, <laughs> you know, you can go to a cemetery and ask them, Dan, can these bones live? No, it, it, it's dead, right? So it says, it says, again, he said unto me, prophesy to these bones and said to them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And see, that's what we're doing right now, man. We come to the highways and hedges, oh, you dry bones, Hear the words of the Lord. Hear the words of Yahweh by Shema Shah, man. Okay, because the dry bones are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Shalom, Malak, Yahweh by Shema Shah, by Shema Kakwadas, Barakatah. Okay, the dry bones are you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man. All right, the, the, these are the uh, the dry bones that Ezekiel is speaking about. Look at you. Look at yourself in the mirror, man. Look at you today. Look what you're doing. you shooting one another. you killing one another. All right? Well, 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 you're calling yourself niggas, calling yourself spicks, calling yourself savages, walk around with brute beasts. Okay, so you're these dry bones, man. You're in a dead estate. You're dead in the mind, man. 
All right. It goes on to say, Thus saith the Lord power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And what's that breath? The understanding of who we truly are, man. Okay, so the Lord says he's going to cause us to, he's going to enter his, his breath is going to enter into us. He's going to cause us to live. All right, he's going to cause us to live, man. And this is huge, brothers. This is huge. Because, hey, hey this is happening right now to this day. It's, it's still happening, man. Ezekiel the 37 chapter is still happening right now. This great awakening. That's why you see all these Israelites from the four corners of the earth. You see all these Israelites, man, waking up. Okay? And you, like, you still got Jake to say, oh, I don't know if it's true, man. Well, damn. You see, if it's one, if it's one person, yeah, you may be crazy. If it's two, maybe, you know, maybe still so. But you got millions now. It's, it's, it's in the millions. It's not even, it's not even a, a community thing anymore. It's a thing in the millions of, uh, of our people waking up to who they truly are. Waking up to keep the law, statute, and commandments. Waking up to turning from sin, repenting. Okay, so this thing is very huge, man. It's real. It's not, it's not, it's not a fantasy. It's not a joke. It's not a conspiracy. It's real, man. Okay, it's the Bible. It's, 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 it's prophecy. It was prophecy that we will fall away to who, uh, from who we were. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab it right quick. I'm going to grab it in the book of Jeremiah. It's the book of Jeremiah. the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 4. Oh, no, that's not it. If a brother, if a brother's on the common board, man, can a brother please put uh, thou even thyself shall, shall discontinue from the heritage? Is it 24? Nah. I thought it was 16, though. But yeah, it says, uh, it says, Thou even thyself shall discontinue from the heritage that I have given thee, man. And when, when you go into heritage, it goes into something that is passed down from generation unto generation. And what was that passed down from uh, to us, generation from generation? The law and statutes and commandments say, Yahweh Bashim al Shai. So we fell away from that. And then we went into what? If we fell away from the laws given to us, what we went into? We went into the ways of the heathen. You know, now we celebrating Christmas. Now we celebrating Thanksgiving. Now we celebrating uh, 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 Easter. Okay, because we fell away from who we truly were as a people. We ain't keeping the Passover no more. We ain't keep, you know, these things. We, we, going, we went into the way of the heathen. It goes on to say, it says, And I will lay some news upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he, Salakia, then said he unto me, prophesy to the wind, prophesy son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, power, come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe upon these slain that they may live, man. Yeah, we were slain. Slain, slain spiritually. Okay, slain, gone. Gone, a dead estate, man. Through, out of it. Completely out of it, man. All right? But the Lord said, hey, 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 breathe upon these slain that they may live. And now we're living. See, we're living spiritually because we have this knowledge. We have the understanding. We have the laws, statutes, and commandments again. We understand who we are again. All right? But for a time, uh, for a time being... We didn't have that, brothers. All right? It says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army, man. And that's what you're seeing right now on the highways and hedges. Even though we may not agree on the same doctrine, one thing we can all come into agreement is that we're, we're, we, are, we are the Israelites. That's why you see all these different Israelite camps. Okay, all these Israelite camps on the highways and hedges today, man. Okay, because that's prophecy uh, pursuant to Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, man. That's why you see all these Israelites waking up, you know, all these Israelites coming together. Uh, 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 on, on one agreement, okay, we are the people of the book. It says, and they stood upon their feet an exceeding great army, which is uh, 
pursuant to, uh, if I could go grab it right quick, the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Uh, the 11th chapter and the 11th verse, and it reads, it says, and after three days and a half, which is 350 years from the time period of 1619 to, uh, to 1969, it says, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them with salt. Okay, so hey, we, said we stand upon our feet, and great fear is falling upon them with salt, man. All right, great fear from the pond and with salt, which also is in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. I believe a brother put it up here. Yeah, man. Shalom, Taziyar Makazah, Prophets in Babylon Camp, Tampa, Florida. Yeah, Bashim Al Shah, Barakat Now, he ain't put the one up, but I'm going to grab it, though. I'm going to grab it in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5. In verse 1, it says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, man, and made no account of his labor. So that's what we're doing right now, brothers. We stand, we stand in, in great boldness before the faces of such as have afflicted us, which are the Caucasian race, along with the rest of the heathen, man. They, these, these are the people that afflicted us. All right? And we're standing in great boldness now, man. We're standing in great boldness. We're not, you know, coming out here like it used to be in 1950s and 40s, and we're coming out here with our head down, we can't look at Edomite in this fucking eye. No, we're coming out here in great boldness, and we're declaring unto them no judgment. We're declaring unto them as what happened to our nation and what happened to your nation. As we went into captivity, now you have to go into captivity. And not only the Caucasian race, but the rest of the heathen as well. We're doing it boldly. Why? Because the spirit of life, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, is upon us again to do so, man. Which means only one thing. It only means one thing. If, we, if the Israelites are out here declaring themselves to be the Israelites, okay, and we're, and, and, and we're, and we're prophesying the downfall of a kingdom, only means one thing, man, that another kingdom is coming up. All right? If one kingdom goes down, that means another kingdom is coming up, and that's our kingdom. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. Well, we're going to be in power. See, right now, we have no power, man. We have no power here. We, we, we got to go, we got to get up, we have to go to work, we have to pay bills, we have to pay taxes, we have to pay for this, we have to pay for that. We have no power here. We have our own. We don't got our own land. We don't have anything. But soon we will. When Yahweh Hashem al destroys his present kingdom, man. Okay? So going on, in the book of, back in the book of Ezekiel, it says what? Then said unto me, then he said unto me, Ezekiel 37, 11, it says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Okay, so that's what's about to happen, man. The Lord is about to bring us into the land of Israel, man. He's about to bring us into Jerusalem again because right now, pursuant to the book of Baruch, okay, we are yet to stand our captivity, man. All right? Which well, America, and what it, what, it, what, it given, what it has given us is an illusion of freedom, man. Yeah, you know, it, it, the, the slaves were free, <laughs> but they were still in America. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we can go out, we can go out and get a drink, but we still in America, bro. You still got to be here. You still have to put up with the bullshit. You still have to look at the, 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 the face of your enemy, man. The one who put you in this current situation. And nothing you can do about it. So we're in captivity. All right? So the Lord going to bring us. He said he's going to bring us to the land of Israel. And it says, and, they, and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. I say, Lord, he's going to put his spirit in us, man, and we're, and we're going to live. All right, he's going to put his spirit in us, and we're doing that right now, bro. All right, the Lord, the spirit of the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, the Rakhakwadash, is upon us, brothers. All right, beginning with our apostles and our elders, the great millstone, our leadership, the like minded brothers, man. Okay, the, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is upon us, man. How do you think we come out here, bro? 
How do you think we come out into the highways and hedges, man, in, in, in the face of our enemies, man? Bold as a lion. Brothers, you know, brothers, hey, whether you in a camp or whether you out here by yourself, man. All right? Come out here boldly. It says, And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel 37 and 15. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel's companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and, the, and, for, the, and for all the house of Israel and his companions. So it says, take one stick. Okay, for Judah, and write upon it the trials under the house of Judah, and then take a stick for Ephraim and, and write upon it for all the uh, houses of Ephraim. Okay, and that's right here, man. What you see right here. Okay, let me get it right quick. Salaki. That's what you see right here, man. That's why we got the 12 tribes on Salaki. I gotta, I gotta cover this up. This is not a part of, you know, us. But you see, this is what this is what this is right here, man. This is that stick for the house of Judah. And you got the stake for the house of Ephraim. And that's what you're seeing right there, man. All right, so this prophecy. It says, And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, What thou not show us what thou meanest by these, say unto, the, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the twelve, so like in the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes, and says to them, Thus saith the Lord Power, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be going, and will gather them on every side, and will bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the mountain of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. We're going to be under Yahweh Shai, under King David. Right? It says, And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore. So what you're seeing right now, not only are we waking up to the fact of who we are, you're seeing uh, the, the, the tribes coming back together in unity, man. You got the northern kingdom, and you got the southern kingdom, man. Uh, you have you have the house of the uh, Negroes, uh, Jamaicans, and so-called Haitians, and you got the house of uh, Ephraim and his companions. You got the northern tribes. You got uh, the Dominicans, Guatemalan to uh, Panamanians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, North American Indians, the Seminole Indians, Argentinians, the Chileans, Colombians, the Araguay, uh, uh, Mexicans. Okay, so we are we are all the Israelites. Those are the Israelites, man. These are, those are the Israelites, brothers. And we're coming back together because as it said they shall no more be divided into two kingdoms because for a time period hey, we were warring with each other man we were we were split in half after after the reign of solomon we we, we we were divided against each other man we were divided against each other and, and even today you still see it to an extent you still see uh the, 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 the tribes being divided against one another but now we're coming together okay more and more we're coming together man in these latter days and it's a spiritual thing. Even Jake that may not be in the truth. You may see Jake, Jake, Jake not even in the truth, but he friends, it'd be, it be Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom clicking up and they be cool, man. Even it's because it's a spiritual thing. It's because the Lord is raising up Israel, beginning with the elective. All right? And ultimately, all of our people are going to be, all going to be conjoined together again in the kingdom of heaven. And it goes on to say, Ezekiel 37 and 23, neither shall they defy themselves anymore with their idols. So we're not going to serve false gods in the kingdom of heaven. Nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their power. And David, my servant, shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto, unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein. 
even they and their children and their children's children forever. And David my and David and my servant David Shalakim shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I'll make a covenant with peace with them. Yeah. Okay. So this, so this is a new covenant that we're about to enter into because the previous covenant we broke. All right. It says, and I will place them and multiply them, and will sink and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their power, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, or my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Okay, so the Lord, he's building up Israel again, man. All right, he's building up Israel again. All right. And, and these are the future prophecies. That was the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And we ran through it pretty quick. What, at 20 minutes? So, you know, and we're in the midst of that right now, man. We're in the midst of that right now. That's why this thing is so important. That's why it's to be taken serious. All right? Because, hey, man, we, we, we in the midst of something huge, man. And the Lord basically gave you chronological order of how he's going to do things, man. All right? He's going to raise, he's going to raise us up. And then, he's going to, and then he's going to deliver us. He's going to take us back to uh, the land of Israel, man. So this thing is huge. It's, it's big. It's big, man. All right? So without further ado, I'm now, I can just jump into, you know, whatever the spirit leads me to, man. But yeah, you know, hey, not, now, it's time, now it's the time come of our salvation, brothers. What's that scripture? It says our salvation is nearer than when we have believed. Okay, our salvation. Okay, because we're the only nation of people that need salvation, man. You know, we need we need salvation, man. We 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 you know we were brought over here in captivity. Our brothers almost say genocide, man. They gotta see these people every day. So you know we we need to be saved. We need a savior. All right, pursuant to the book of uh, Matthew one, it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite precepts. Matthew one and twenty one. It says, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save the people from their sins. All right? He shall save his people from their sins, man. Okay? Yeah, that's right. The Lord is going to save us from our sins. Ultimately, when we get uh, beamed up into what the world ignorantly calls UFOs, we're going to literally be taken up and we're going to be changed. A, 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 good, read, a good read for you to read uh, will be uh, the, the first Corinthians, the 15th chapter, man. The first Corinthians, the uh, the fifteenth chapter, when Paul is going into how a, uh, eventually, you know, there's going to come a time where we're going to be changed, brothers. All right, we're going to be changed, man. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be delivered, man. All right, it ain't going to be no more death. It ain't going to be no more sorrow. It ain't going to be no more crying. It ain't going to be no more curses. No, we're going to be we're going to be good. We're going to be brought back. We're going to be brought back to the Lord. Okay, because the laws. Okay, uh, statutes, commandments is going to be written in us. It's going to be written in us, brothers. All right, it's going to be written in us. And guess what? Hey, there after that, it's everlasting paradise, man. You know what I'm saying? Everlasting paradise. Okay, but other than that, before we get to there, we got to go through these hard times we're going through, man. Because we're 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 about to enter into a time like never before. We're about to enter into a time where look, hey Esau, Edom, man, he see this, man. He see us out here on the highways and this every Saturday. You think he don't see? You think he ain't watching all these? You think he ain't watching all these millions of Israelites getting woke up to the truth? So what you think he gonna do about that? He gonna come down with great wrath. He gonna try to stop this, man. But you can't stop this because what you're seeing is prophecy. But I'm gonna grab that actually because we're living in some exciting times, bro. We're living in a time period where all prophecies are gonna be fulfilled, man. Revelation 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe means destruction to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, which that's, that's men and that's men and women and children. That's people. All right? It says, and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. How you know his time is short? Because he sees us, bro. He sees us. We're, hey, we, we, we're declaring, see these men right here? These men right here, they watching, bro. They, they, these men right here, they're watching, bro. They watching. 
<laughs> okay, they, they must believe and they watching, man. And they, and they about to come down with great wrath because they know their time is short. They know it. Esau, Esau, your time is up, man, because you were, uh, you were promised a temporary rulership. Okay, because only two people in the Bible were promised the fatness of the earth, and that was Esau and that was Jacob. And right now, and who has the fatness of the earth? Esau, the so-called white man. Whose face is on the global dollar? Esau, the so-called white man. So who's in power? Esau, the so-called white man. But see, there's going to come a time, brothers, when we're going to be in power. I mean, you how shy. Okay, every man in their rightful order. All right? So, Rocky, that's Satan. You come out here, you start yawning and shit. You know what I'm saying? Demons, bro. But anyway, like I was saying, hey, you, you, every man in their rightful order. That's when we're we going to come into power, bro. We're going to rule them. We're going to rule you with a rod of iron, man. See, we come into rulers. See, every, every, everybody wants justice until, you know, you, you, start to, you start to preach justice. America's all about justice. You know? Yeah. And part, of the, part, of the, part of the Pledge of Allegiance of America, it says justice for all. It says justice for all. But hey, how can that be true? Well, the Negro, Latino, Native American have received no justice for what you've done to them, man. So Esau is all about so-called justice until you began to preach about justice. And now justice has become a problem. Preaching, preaching, preachers of justice have became terrorists. Justice is hate speech. Righteous judgment, an eye for an eye has become hate speech, man. You see, so you can you can deem us whatever you want to deem us. It ain't gonna change the fact that you have a tap to pay, man. Because let's say, look, let's say this, Esau. Let's say we do forgive you. Let's say we forgive you. We move on from it. Let bygones be bygones. Thou mean your how about shim out? I gonna forgive you. Okay. Lord, we the world give a damn about how we feel about it. Regardless if we if we get down with it or not. It's it's about what he wants to do to Esau Edom, man. Because the Lord said, he that touched you, touched the what? Touched the apple of his eye. Okay, and we, we have been touched. We have been brutally raped, robbed, and murdered. He said, oh, well, that was, that was hundreds of years ago. That was, you know, that was some time ago. When the Heavenly Father time, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a thousand years ago. It was recent. All right? It was recent, man. The scripture says, the Most High requires that which is past. So even if it was a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, the Most High requires it, man. Mm -hmm. All right, he requires it. He requires justice. That's right, man. He requires justice. Revelation 13 and verse 10, start of verse 9. It says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. All right, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The patience and the faith of the saints, man. So we're, we're patiently waiting for the Lord to give us judgment, justice. Okay, for the Lord to execute judgment upon the heathen, man. Ex uh, p -p patiently waiting. You know what patient means? Patient means to suffer because if you can have it your way, you don't want to wait for anything, man. It's a lot. You don't want to wait for anything in life. So the fact that you got to wait, like, ah, oh, man, I don't want to wait for it, but I got to. Like, imagine getting a new car would say, okay, well, the car is going to be delivered in two to three days. You're like, damn, man, I got, I got to, I really got to wait two to three days. I, I, just want, I want my car now. But you got to wait for it, man. Okay? And see, you know, when, when, once you, when, you, when you wait for something and then it comes to you, it feels better than when you just get it. All right? Waiting and grind, and when you, when you grind something out, when you grind for it and you work for it and you wait for it, it feels better than it just being it's, it's just being handed to you. Because you had to work and you had to wait and you had to work uh, and, and, and you to go through torments for it, man. So when we finally get our hands on you, fucking devils. We when we finally get to put our foot up your ass, man. We gonna enjoy it. You got that right. We gonna enjoy it, man. We ain't gonna sit. And, and look all sorrowful and mopey and gropey and depressed when we 
Nah, bro, we're gonna be laughing, we're gonna be rejoicing, man. We're gonna be giving praise to our power. Yeah, how about our shit now? Shot. It ain't gonna be a thing of all, oh, man. I don't really. Man, we gonna. Because the Lord gonna give us remembrance of all things. So he gonna, he gonna remind us of what you did to us. Okay? Because really, what, 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 what Esau is about to experience is gonna be really anger of the Lord. The anger of the Lord is gonna be kindled in Edom. And he's gonna put that anger within us, brothers. All right. Let's get a preach it right quick. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter twenty-five, and verse uh, fourteen. It says, "And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger, according to my fury." And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. Okay, so the Lord said he's gonna, he's gonna, they're going to know his fury, man. They're going to know his vengeance. What does vengeance mean? It means get back, man. You know, motherfuckers come up here talking about, oh, you got to forgive and forget. Well, the Heavenly Father, through a son, you how shy. He doesn't have a forgive and forget spirit, man. The Lord wants get back, man. The Lord wants payback, man. You people put the Lord in the box. You put, you, 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 hey, America, see what America has done. Another reason why the Lord's anger at Esau because Esau made the Lord uh, he made the Lord he made the Lord feminine man. You put a feminine uh, a feminine uh, uh, mo spirit on the Lord, bro. You put a, uh, a feminine image uh, a mo image on the Lord, bro. They gave you this man right here. They gave you this man right here. This this is who the Lord is supposed to be. Soft ass faggot white boy. Right, that's not who the Lord is, man. The Lord is, the scripture said the Lord is a man of war, bro. The Lord is a man of war. He ain't no fucking punk. He ain't no goddamn punk, man. The Lord is serious, bro. The Lord won't, the Lord won't get back, man. The Lord wants vengeance. He ain't the thing, oh, just forgive me. I love everybody and everybody's welcome and everybody just says, nah, the Lord ain't coming with that shit, bro. The Lord is saying, hey, man, I want vengeance. The Lord said the day of vengeance, uh, the, day of, the day of vengeance is in my heart, man. Lord, wait, and the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is in haste to get His hands on Edom, man. I'm gonna get a preacher right quick dealing with that. It's the book of Isaiah, the book of the prophet Isaiah. Where are we at, man? The book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou read? Oh, so like if I had mentioned that Bosra is a city in Edom, the capital of Edom. What's now that's what? That's, you know, what's the capital of Edom today? America. It says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth the wine fat? So they're like, damn, Lord, like, you know, you like you've been in the wine fat. When well, you're in the wine fat all day, your, your garments are red now. It's like, like, it's like you've been explaining a lot of people. Which the Lord isn't going to get blood on his garments, but it's symbolic of what, it's, it's symbolic of how much blood he's going to shed, man. It says, This that is glorious as apparel, Isaiah 63 and 1, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treaded the wine fat? I have treaded the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain on my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. So the Lord said the day of vengeance, man. The day of him getting his get back is in his heart. It's burning, bro. Motherfucker ever got at you and you, and you and you didn't get to get your lick back, man. You you in haste to see that motherfucker again, man. Like somebody cheap shot at you and they run away and you meditating on that. You meditate on that lick you just took, man. You couldn't get your lick back, man. 
So what you think Yahweh Shah is doing, man? Yahweh Shah is meditating. He's meditating, okay, upon his lick that he, he he's in haste to get back, man. The Lord is in haste to get his lick back, bro. The Lord is in haste to get his get back, bro. All right? He's in haste. And when the Heavenly Father tell him to go, he's going to go. And, he, and guess what, brothers? When Yahweh shot get his leg back, and we're going to get ours too, man. The Lord going to say, man, sit back and watch. Say, well, watch what I do to our enemies, man. <laughs> okay? Watch what, I do to, watch what I do to America. Sit back and watch what I do to America, man. We gonna sit on. We we gonna be looking down from the sea of glass, watching this bitch get fucking burnt with nuclear fire, man. Watching the earth get tore up. The Lord about to set this earth on fire, man. You people don't know who the God of the Bible is, bro. All right, something that the brother Ibar has said. A while back, he said the same fear of the Lord that's on us is going to eventually be on you, motherfuckers, man. Okay, the same fear of the Lord that makes us come out here every weekend and get to the top of our lungs. What what makes men do this? People say, get a job. This is our job. But we also have other jobs. All right, you know. So the same fear of the Lord that's upon us to make the same fear of the Lord that motivates us. You going you gonna see it. Okay. You're gonna see it, man. You wanna say feel the Lord of you. When all these calamities begin to come to the earth. When destruction, plagues, famine, death, and great destruction, mourning. When you can't go to the store and buy water. When you can't buy food. Okay, when you're starving to death, man. People are gonna see it. You're gonna see it and you're gonna be you're, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be afraid, man. Alright? That was it for Isaiah. It's the book of 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ear of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, man. And that's what we doing. We speaking to you the words of prophecy. We ain't prophesying to you smooth things. When he come out here to tell you how you want to, what you want to hear, how you want to feel, and to feel good, go along to get along, spirit. Now we come out here to tell you straight to look, man. The Lord is about to bring death to the world. If you don't repent, he's going to bring death to your motherfucking ass too, man. Straight up. Shit, even me, bro. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't saved yet. I ain't make it yet. The Lord bring death to me if I don't keep doing this, man. That's why we come out here every week. And season, not a season. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when you want to go home, you know, you, sometimes you don't want to get out your damn bed, man. You want to just be at home, relaxing, chilling. You know what I'm saying? Eating Cheetos, playing a game. But you got to get your ass up and you got to come out here like the Lord told you to do. And that's what we doing, man. We get up and we come out here every week, man. It ain't because we just come out here every week. No, because the fear of the Lord is upon us. The same fear that was on Noah. The same fear that was on Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah, all these great men that got up and did the will of the Lord. What you think motivated them? Because they seen the things the Lord's about to bring to the earth, man. People think it's a fucking joke. You think it's a game? It's real, bro. It's saying this, this, this is this is this ain't no fantasy. It's real life. And the beautiful thing about it, man, you look, you look around, man. Just look. You like people that walk by. It's like you're not even here, bro. But guess what, brothers? We are here, man. And whether they hear or forbear, guess what? The Lord is the Lord. The Lord taking notes through the angels, though. And the angels. Here you go, Lord. This is this is who did this. Is who repented? This is who didn't repent? This is who got right? This is who scoffed? This is who mocked? This is who helped the prophets? This is who didn't? The Lord will say, okay, okay, okay. And He gonna send the angels to set a mark upon those that that's that's that's. That's exempt from judgment. And he's going to send a mark upon those who ain't exempt from judgment. Who are going to get caught up in the evils. And when all these things come upon you, you're going to think back. You say, oh shit, that was a man of the Lord. That was a prophet. Not there, man. The prophets are the crazy guys. The one who don't want to. The, 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 one, the, the one who tells you what you don't want to hear is the one you should you best take heed to, man. All right? The one who tells you what you don't want to hear. 
You best take heed to that guy. Okay? Because hey, scripture says uh an enemy speak uh, speak speak with smooth uh smooth words. It says open rebuke is better than secret love. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So you don't want to hear that, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's all good, man. It's gonna be a prosperous time, man. You just, hey, man, you gonna live a long, prosperous life. Nah, bro. We telling you straight up, look, man. This shit is about to get real, bro. So I ain't gonna speak too long. Jack, Jack, back to uh, Second Edges 15. It says, "Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them trouble thee." It says. This is Flacchio. Fear not the imagination against thee, and let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Okay? For you people out here, hey, hey, motherfucker that was in the, in, in the flood. They're, they died in their unfaithfulness, bro. They, they had a chance to get it right. They had a grace period. And I believe what it is. Amos it says, surely the Lord will do nothing. I believe, I believe in the NLT. It says the Lord will do nothing before he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. It says, so before the Lord do something, he always tells his prophets, like, look, I'm about to do this. Go out there and reprove them and rebuke them. Give them warning. Reprove or rebuke and give warning. That's what we do, brothers. We're reproving, we're rebuking, and we're giving warning. And whoever wants to hear it, hears it. And whoever don't want to hear it, oh, so be it. But one thing nobody can't say, they ain't say they can't say they weren't warned. You were warned. We gave you the message. We gave you the heads up, man. And guess what? It's all going to be made evidence. And hey, I didn't day, brothers, the blood is off our hands, man. We did what the Lord told us to do. And I brought to that the Lord found us worthy to escape the sad perils, man. By faith and by works. By faith and by works, man. Because up here, man, it's this don't, this don't, this, this don't, this is the only thing that matters, man. Okay. Heavenly Father, cold, man. Through a son, you know, shy, he cold, bro. Lord, the Lord, the Lord fucking bamboozle you, man. He, he, he puts something so insignificant in your face because everybody is looking for something so magnificent. They want the Lord, they want, they want the Lord to have an angel descend from the sky. They want the Lord to have an angel to send from the sky when the message is right here in front of you, bro. You ask yourself, man, is that real? Is it fake? Is it real? Bro, it's right. the answer is right in front of you. But you're not going to reach out and grab it. Because the Lord, the Lord, he was a stumble block. Base man like me. Base man, bro. I come out here, we don't got the best apparel on. You know what I'm saying? We got some dingy shoes, a camera stand. You know what I'm saying? Some brothers got missing hair. Brothers got missing teeth. You know? Brothers look rough. We don't got the we don't got the edge ups and the line ups. We look rough. We look like rough men. So you know they looking like this man. Like this, this man. This, he's a prophet. Really, yeah, you know bullshit, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. But yeah, nigga. Those were the prophets. Those were the men the Lord sent down. And it's funny how Jake say, "Oh, Jay want to see an angel or something." Well, you got angels in the midst of you. Because all the only thing the word angel means is messenger. So we are messengers. Okay, and human flesh giving you a message. The message is repentance. The message is come back to the Lord. The Lord said, All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. What is Jeremiah 28? Jeremiah 28 and 20. Twenty and twenty-eight. I believe it goes on the line of you know the Lord saying, "Look, I sent all I sent to you, all my servants, the prophets." Okay, say so he sent all the prophets out here, man, to warn. Okay, but y'all took heed? No. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna take heed. 
because y'all don't believe, man. See, nobody believes until shit really starts to happen, bro. It's all it's all fun and games, so it's not fun and games no more, man. Brother, we gotta do this for years. Brother's been out here years, man. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 plus years, almost 40 years. We're proving and rebuking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're proving and rebuking. And guess what? The time gonna come, brothers. The time gonna come. All right? All these things are gonna come to pass. Yes, what I want. I did want Jeremiah 28, man. If it's some of them brothers or sisters out there on the comment board, man. Y'all about your mouth, shot, but I can thumb to your family. Uh, Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me, we start at verse 7. Nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. So that's what we're doing right here. It says, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old have prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms of war, of evil, and of pestilence. The prophet was prophesied the peace. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, it says, then shall the, the, the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. Okay, so when the word of the prophet of peace come to pass, then it's going to be no, okay, the Lord truly sent him, which we not, we're not prophets of peace, man. Okay, we're not prophets of peace. The Lord, Jeremiah has told you, like, look, the prophets before me prophesied against uh, the great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. Okay? We come out here to prophesy the, the destruction of our enemy's kingdom, man. We ain't come out here to, to tell you to have a good time and, you know, part like it's 1996. And, nah, bro, we come out here and tell you, like, look, man, this shit about to get real. All right? We're, we're entering into a time where hey, we're about to, we're, hey, the, the world is about to see the second death, bro. The Lord, hey, the Lord killed billions in that flood, man. <laughs> if not hundreds of millions, look, man, the Lord, it had to be billions, bro. It had to be, man. It only made sense because the that, that, you got Esau and his agenda, his, his, and his mortal fucking mind. All right, he talking about, uh, he, he wants to have a global reset. Well, the Most High already did that, bro. When he flooded the earth, that was the real global reset. The Lord resetted this bitch, man. Yeah, how about Shemal Shai re resetted the earth? <laughs> that was the real global reset when he flooded everything. And look at the people. Look at look at look at and, and, and what was going on then? What what had to be happening for the Lord to flood the earth? What was the characteristic? What was the characteristics of the people? They walked in great pride, man. I'm in Sarasota, Florida, and I and, and they got they talking about they talking about Sarasota, Florida, embraces problem. Any questions you have, and stuff, and get them you see, it says Sarasota embraces problem. People in the, in the time of the flood, they 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 walked in great pride. They didn't have no humility, performing all types of uh, fucking abominations. Okay, you got to ask, so what, what had to be going on back then for the Lord to destroy the earth? Well, exactly what's going on right now. Okay. And that's what the, and that's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to bring upon it great wrath, great judgment. Okay. Judgment is about to visit the earth, man. And we're about to witness it. Um... Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So they were all having a good time. They were laughing, they were kicking it, you know, eating, drinking, bullshitting, talking shit. All until the day that Noah entered into the ark, man. And guess what? The day that he entered into the ark, every day, that was it, man. No more grace. No more mercy. Whoever repented at that time, repented. Whoever did it, you were fucked. All right? 
You were finished, man. And that's what it's going to be. You, hey, people in today's time, you're going to be finished. Once the Lord say, okay, that's enough. I'm done. I'm done. Bring the plagues. You got what is Revelation? The, the angels holding back the four, the, the four winds. The angels of the four corners of the earth holding back the winds, which represents destruction. It says, so the servants of our power be sealed in their foreheads, man. So once the elect are sealed, once his word have reached, the, once his word have gone out enough, the Lord, the Lord is going to be, oh, it's, that's it, that's it. It's over at that point. It said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Which it has. And now you're seeing more and more prophecy happening every day. You see the economy is about to collapse. The economy is uh, about to collapse. You got the, uh, the digital dollar on the rise. You got the digital dollar. You got fucking, uh, and you had Bank of America talking about last year how hundreds of thousands of jobs are about to be lost. Many things are about to come to the earth, bro. Okay? The dollar is about to crash once again. You can't, you can't say it enough. You got Neuralink that they're about to perform human trials. All right? Dead from classes on that this week. It's about to get real, man. Okay. We're entering into the greatest depression. <laughs> Everybody want to have a fucking good time, bro. Well, you know when we're going to have a good time? We're going to have a good time when you motherfuckers start to have a bad time. When you motherfuckers' kingdom start to crumble. When you can't feed yourself. When you can't feed your children. You can't feed your wife. When you, can't, when, you, when you can't go to the store and buy a gallon of water because it costs too much motherfucking money. Or because it isn't any. That's when we gonna have a good time. The Lord say, in the day of in the day of uh, heaviness and trouble. Uh, let me just grab it right quick. Second Ezra two. It says, verse twenty eight, twenty seven. It says, uh. Second Ezra 2, 27, be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall even be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. So when the Lord said, when the, when, the, when the day of trouble and heaviness come, others shall be uh, uh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance, man. You know what abundance means? Abundance means more than enough. Hey, brothers, we're going to have more than enough, man. We're going to have more than enough. Yeah, how about you on side going to take care of us? We gonna, we, hey, we, hey, we, we gonna be eating. Well, ain't no food in the stores, bro. We gonna be eating, bro. We gonna be drinking. We gonna be having a good. Hey, man. Brother had a dream. We was in the under. <laughs> brother had a dream. Brother was in the underground bunker, man. Uh, throwing a barbecue, man. So hey, imagine that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's 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 the reward, bro. Hey, the Lord. Some men, certain men, certain men ain't gonna have to go to Jacob's trouble, bro. Now, I'm not saying like, like Jacob's shovel. We all have to go through Jacob's shovel. I'm saying that some certain men just, 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 going, just going to the Lord is going to be good from the jump. They ain't going to have to see no FEMA camp. They ain't going to have to see none of that. The Lord is going to take care of them. The Lord is going to take. Even with certain men not going through Jacob's shovel, you got some brothers, the Lord calling back home, bro. We, we, we recently just lost a brother. We recently just lost a brother. The Lord took him back home. Isaiah 57, the Lord uh, uh, to keep him from the evils to come. So certain brothers, they ain't gonna be, they ain't gonna have to see the evils of Jacob's trouble. You be gonna be in a mist. Certain brothers gonna be in bunkers, man. The Lord gonna be putting brothers up in bunkers. We ain't gonna have to worry about how we gonna take care of our sons and daughters. The Lord gonna take care of our sons and daughters. We gonna be good. Hey, imagine, you know, everybody else out here catching pure hell, and you somewhere in a damn bunker. <laughs> Eating Cheetos and you know <laughs> drinking Yayun <laughs> until you until you how it's not coming back, man. Now obviously we got to be tried first, but hey, certain brothers, hey, the Lord, the Lord's gonna put up like that, man. Certain brothers are gonna be put up from the jump. Certain brothers may have to go through a little bit of stuff. However, the Lord sees fit, man. We are gonna see how the Lord do it, but we know the Lord said, "Don't worry, bro. We gonna be good." We gonna eat. The Lord said, "My servant shall eat, and, uh, but he shall be hungry. My servant shall drink, but he shall be thirsty." Man, so we gonna be good in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble, brothers, certain brothers gonna be just breeze through it, man. All right, Jacob's trouble once again 
it's not for it's not for the elect. It's for the two thirds, man. Now some of us may have to get put to death. Some of us may have to go through these FEMA camps. It is fucking cool, man. Certain certain of us may have to go through these things. But guess what? At the end all be all, we're gonna be good. Right, I'm walking. What's the incentive? Right, <laughs> and that's and that's and that's our hope. That's why we come out here, we make our bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, we do what the Lord says do. But the Lord said, if you do this, I'm gonna do this for you. If you do this for me, I'm gonna do this for you. Okay? You reap what you sow, man. So we if we reap, if we if we sow righteousness, we gonna reap righteousness. If we sow wickedness, we're gonna reap wickedness. You get what you give. You get out what you put in, man. He that uh, soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. But he that soweth uh, bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So we're going to reap bountifully, brothers, because we've been working, man. How much more the apostles, the elders, you know, the great men that came before us, Abba, King Masha, you know, great men that may have passed on. And when, they, when, they, when the Lord raised them up, they're going to reap bountifully, man, because they've sown bountifully. That's right. That's what it's all about, man. It's all about reaping and work. It's all about work. You know, a lot of niggas don't want to fucking work, man. Nigga come out, nigga come out to the hallways and hedges for a year. You never see the nigga no more. Nigga start catching a little hell, nigga. I, I can't do this, man. I don't know. Okay, well, when it's time for you to call upon the Lord, the Lord say, I don't know, man. I can't do this. I don't know. You ain't want to work for me. You should, why you, you you expect me to come through for you? You couldn't come through for me. When I need you to go out to recruit my people, you ain't doing. You you went away. Where you was at? Huh? Where you was at when I told you to do this? Now you need me. Oh yeah, tell with you, man. But see, we don't want the Lord to do that to us, brother. So we come out here and work, man. Whether we feel like it. I mean, sometimes you don't even feel like coming out, man. Be cold as shit. You don't want to talk to these motherfuckers. You don't want to go out there. And certain times you be on fire to go out, but yeah, you know, season not a season. But regardless, we go out and do what the Lord say do, because it ain't, it ain't about how we feel. It's about what's it's about what needs to be done. It's about what needs to be done, man. And we're doing what needs to be done, brothers. All right, that we are, we must be about our Father's business. If we want to if we want the Father to be about us, we got to be about Him, man. The Lord is the righteous judge. The Lord will not forget our work and labor of love towards His name. Even you sisters out there, man. You sisters out there, you may be helping brothers out. You know, maybe you know, you may be helping brothers out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you do, making garments for brothers. You know what I'm saying? The Lord gonna bless y'all too, man. The Lord gonna bless y'all too. You got certain sort of, uh, individuals that may bring brothers water to camp. You may pay for a prophet's water. You know. Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, see every, see, the Lord, see all that, man. See, we all, and see, the thing about the Lord, we all got to do something. And nobody just finna, you know, finna free load to the kingdom. We all got to do something, man. Okay? And guess what? The Lord is going to, the Lord is going to come through on our behalf for such things. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Man, it's hard labor, brothers. Damn, son. Our labor, brothers, is not in vain, man. All right? Our labor is not in vain, brothers. The work that we put in, the hell that we go through, all that, man, ain't in vain, bro. The Lord taking account, bro. He's seeing, bro. Lord watching, bro. And I'm going to So lock it. Give me a second. Give me a second. And I'm going to run man. Our sacrifice be found worthy. Because that's what it's all about. Our sacrifice being found worthy. Even if it even if it means us to death. Or what do we endure to the end? But even if we have to, even if, even, even if we have to see that fucking guillotine, bro. Even if. Lord said, be thou faithful 10 days, I will give thee a crown of life. Which that 10 days is a time period. Lord said, I will give thee a crown of life, even if we got to lose ours, bro. 
And you see, that's, that's what it's all about. And it's preparing our mind for that great time, bro. Preparing our minds for that great time. Right. Testing. And we gonna pass it, bro. Abu Rantazal, we be the elect, we gonna pass it. And, we, and the Lord is gonna come through for us, man. You see? So that's what it's all about, brothers. Doing the work of the Lord, being an evangelist. Enduring. That's another part of the truth, man. You gotta endure. You gotta endure, man. You gotta endure the hell. You gotta endure the ups. You gotta endure the downs. You gotta endure the what. You don't know what the fuck. You just... You just, you just, and sometimes you be like, you don't even, you just, I, I just got to trust in the Lord, man. I don't even know what the hell is going on in my life right now, man. I got all these debts, I got all these, all these bills piled up and everything that's just going to, everything just, it's like everything just going to shit. But you know what you got to say? You got to say, man, call me and out shy, Lord, I'm just going to trust in you, Lord. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get through this, but I'm going to, you know, I know you're going to get me through it. And that's what the Lord looking for, man. And see, we got to, and certain things the Lord take you through. To prepare your mind for what we're coming into, man. We're gonna be we're gonna be in jail trouble, bro. It's gonna be certain scenarios we go through, like, how the fuck am I gonna get out of this? But you know what you gotta see? You gotta, you gotta say, hey man, call that my mouth shot, man. Just trust the Lord to get through it, and the Lord gonna get us through it, bro. So you know. I'm about to wrap it up. I've been going out here for some time now. But I've brought you you know, you brothers out there on the comment board, you sisters out there that were, were edified. I'm going to close out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to our power, our God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all right? Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhwadash, devil honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do teach and rule well, and peace, love, and blessings to the elect. Peace, love, and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Peace, love, and blessings to you and your families. Shalom.